gather online, each from our individual lives, we carry, we carry into this place the joys and worries of our week, the weight of life, the rightful concerns of all that the future may hold. Here we gather in prayer and preparation. Here we knit ourselves into a community. Here we hold one another in compassion. Here we remember that the work you have called us to do, we do not do it alone. So come, whether you are at home or here, and let us begin worship. Holy God, listen to your people praying for your presence with us. As we gather in worship and praise, listen to the people praying for your encouragement as we go out into the world seeking to do your will. Holy God, listen to the people praying for the unity that we find as the many members of one body. Listen to the people praying for the guidance of your Holy Spirit and opening our hearts to hear one another in love. Holy God, listen. Listen to your people praying. Amen. And our hymn will be, Lord, listen to your people praying. Lord, listen to your people praying. Psalm 68, <clears throat> 1 through 10. Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. 
Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exalted before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain and abundance, O God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found it a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. And the second reading is taken from the book of John, 17, 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made the name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. I must confess that when I read the Gospel of John, I often find myself examining a passage over and over and over again. It's challenging to understand the language of John, though clearly he is a most magnificent writer. I find John's thoughts mysterious and somewhat out of reach. I wonder if anybody watching this service today at home feels the same way. I had a professor at Yale named Dr. Harold W. Attridge, a famous New Testament scholar who was an expert on John, and I had sort of put the Gospel of John on the back burner, but I took Harry Attridge's class, which opened up my mind to look at this Gospel much deeper. And I must say, I am so grateful to Dr. Attridge. Thank you. In the text we read today, thank you very much, Carol, for reading it, Jesus was praying and he was doing so directly to God, whom Jesus called Father. And he was doing it right out loud for all of the disciples to hear. He did it with no self-consciousness, no shame, because Jesus wanted them to hear his thoughts and he wanted them to hear how he prayed to God. That moment must have been supremely memorable for the disciples to hear. Let me ask you, when you have prayed for or been prayed for by someone else that was particularly meaningful and memorable to you, it's a special honor, isn't it, when someone prays for you or when we pray for someone else? Here's a person 
personal story about that. I was at times a kind of a wild child growing up in a family of eight kids. My parents used to be surprised by some of the things that I did, which I thought were just fine and just part of growing up. But my father, in particular, was a real conservative guy. He'd been a Navy officer during World War II. He had super strict parents. And he had some unhappy family experiences. So he had very definite ideas of what family life should be and how they should look. So anyway, my dad used to tell me that he prayed for me quite often, which I found interesting. We had such a big family, my father must have spent an awful lot of time praying. He was a devout church man, went to church every Sunday, sang in the choir, and was a big supporter of his church. And I remember sitting up in the choir loft with him, singing, and watching his face during times when he'd pray, and how serious his face would become with his eyes closed and his head bent down, sort of looking like a very serious Abe Lincoln. He had a deep faith, my dad, and even though he had a very tumultuous life. I'm grateful to him for praying for me, because I got into some pretty tight jams as a teenager, and I think those prayers may have been just the help I needed to get through it all. My dad died in 1981, long, long before I went into ministry. But sometimes I wonder what he would have thought about me being ordained. I do feel his fervent prayers helped me get here. So this morning I want to ask you, who has prayed for you? And how do those prayers affect your life? I want you to think about that just for a moment now. Take a very deep breath and close your eyes and imagine who it is or remember who it is that has prayed for you and feel the power of what that prayer did for you. Breathe that in the way the disciples must have breathed in Jesus' prayers. Now, in that same spirit, think of what the prayers that Jesus mean to you in your life now. The scripture says Jesus prayed this, And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. What does that really mean? He asked God to protect us. If someone as important and sacred as Jesus went out of his way to pray for our protection, I guess we should be grateful and have some trust in him as we go through our work in God's world. More importantly, Jesus prayed for us to be as one to be as one. So let me ask you this question. Are we? Do we practice acting in a manner that is in unity with each other? Are we one? I think people are trying to be. That's what matters, that we try to act in unity and love with one another and respect for one another. Even during those times that we just don't feel like it or we don't see eye to eye but we don't like someone. We still need to work as though we are one. Jesus in his final hours on earth prayed for his followers in his time and also for those who would follow behind. And that's you and me. We are entrusted us into God's hands that we might be all together just as God and Jesus were throughout his life on earth. The unity of God's family was super, super important to Jesus. He did not want anybody to be alone. What are some ways this church community glorifies God? Honestly, I am humbled and impressed 
with how Center Congregational Church people pray for one another. It was just in my first few days that I started getting intensive prayers and musical hymns and daily devotions through my email. You guys pray for each other. Not only on Sundays, but you pray for each other all through the week. And to me, that shows that you care. You care about each other, and you care to let everybody at the church know that you care. And frankly, as silly as it may sound, I think that would make Jesus proud. So today, we pray for the time when we can open the doors of this gorgeous sanctuary and let everyone back inside safely. I know that's very important to you. I totally understand that. We pray for the end of COVID-19 or the efficacy of a new vaccine or medicine to protect us from the illness. We pray to understand the differences of opinion we might have about how to handle the safest ways to do church during this time. And we pray that each person of this church be of peace and good health and good spirit. We pray that we glorify one another in God's name as Jesus glorified God and as God glorified his son Jesus. We pray the Holy Spirit continues to be present here in this sanctuary and in all places of need in the world. And let's face it, there's a lot of need. We pray the Holy Spirit is there with them. We pray that we extend a hand of love and understanding which lies just beyond our own selves. And in that spirit, hear now the words of poet David White, who wrote a poem called Just Beyond Yourself. Just beyond yourself. It's where you need to be. Half a step into self forgetting, and the rest restored by what you'll meet. There is a road always beckoning. When you see the two sides of it closing together at that far horizon and deep in the foundations of your own heart at exactly the same time, that's how you know it's the road you have to follow. That's how you know it's where you have to go. That's how you know you have to go. That's how you know. Just beyond yourself. It's where you need to be. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we glorify you. It is not for our own sake that we have chosen to follow the way of Jesus the Christ. For we know the story. We know that the way of extravagant love is not a way to human status or worldly power. Glorify us that we may glorify you. Following Jesus can grant freedom from the world, from consumerism, from the constant pressure to produce, from the gaze that tells us we are never enough, no matter how much we have or how often we work out. Following Jesus means living into the promise that we are enough, as we are, for God to love us and call us to be bearers of the kingdom. We also acknowledge that following Jesus can make us very uncomfortable as our freedom levels the playing field and puts us all on equal footing. In your mercy, God of love, help us to show forth your love to all. Help us to seek out and lift up your presence and the inbreaking of your kingdom. Remind us that our work is not to our own glory, but always to yours. You who created and loved us all with grace and abundance. Help us to look to you, not to clouds and light and the heavens, but on the land in the need of rain, among those who are most hurt by the brokenness of this world. Dear God of grace, help us to move the prayers of our hearts into our hands and feet. Amen. And our next hymn is to Thou Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We will be singing the first two stanzas. <laughs>
offer that it might be for the stewardship and the nurture of your beloved cre creation and of your children. By our gifts, may your presence in this world be made known. By our gifts, may we embody your grace and love towards all that you have made. We pray today especially for foster daughters from Belfast, Gina M., who has just died, known with early onset Parkinson's. She is very frightened and says she needs our prayers of comfort because she cries all the time. Please wrap Gina in prayer and love. Prayers of healing for Susan and Pat Sheldon, who is very sick and at the beds. Susan and her other cat, Lucy, are very afraid of losing Sheldon. Please comfort her with prayers of healing and for Dr. Cat. Cassie, who is very old and very ill and only has a short time to live, send prayers of comfort to Josh. Prayers for Matt's mom, Ruby, and for Matt. Prayers for protection for all of diabetes, heart failure, lung problems, compromised immune systems, age, and other infirmities that make them susceptible, susceptible to the virus. Prayers of healing for Masha S. Prayers of joy. Our daughter Maura was married May 21st to Patrick. We await a time we can safely celebrate together here and in England. And prayers that they find post-doctoral positions together. Our next hymn and our last hymn is hymn number 708 and the great hymn book, Blessed Be the Tide that Binds. We are singing verse 1 and 4. <laughs> Jesus and the love of God. 